All right, everybody can find their flag in front of them, do a flag salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Amen. Thank you. Roll call, please, Vicki. Mr. Caliguire. Here. Ms. Dormo. Ms. Dormo. She was there. She's present. Maybe she has her speaker off. I'm here. Okay, there you are. <laughs> can, hear you. Good, can you hear can you hear me or no? Yes, yes. we can. Ms. Gonteski. Here. Mr. Jenkins. Here. Present. The other Mr. Jenkins. <laughs> here. Mrs. Karamanugan. Here. Mr. Litwack. Here. Mr. Lure. Here. Ms. Whitney. Ms. Whitney is not here, correct? Yeah, she's she not here. She's unable public. to attend. She has internet problems in Florida. Yeah, no, no, no. For the for the sake of the uh, audience, that they the, the other people. Yes. All right. Thank you. Reading a statement of adequate notice, please. Notice of this meeting pursuant to the Open Public Meetings Act has been given as follows: advertising in the Burlington County Times and the Courier Post on January thirtieth, twenty twenty, posting on school bulletin boards and main entrance doors on. December 3rd, 2020. Sending a notice to the Burlington County Times and the Carrier Post on December 3rd, 2020. Filing written notice with the clerk of Delanco Township on December 3rd, 2020, and posting the notice electronically on the district website at www.delanco.com on December 3rd, 2020. Thank you. I need a motion and a second for the approval of the minutes of November 11th, 2020 regular and executive session meetings. Motion. Sorry. Marissa makes a motion. I'll second. Okay. Questions or comments? <clears throat> All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. I've uh, gone over the reports of the Secretary and Treasurer for October 2020, and they are in agreement, and I will make a motion on that. Uh, I'll second. A second by Rose. Questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Dormo, no. Motion carries, thank you. All right, liaison report. Do we have anything from Riverside High School at present? Um, well, this portion is for the student activities and I did have Mrs. Jen Hunter. I reached out to her after our last meeting and asked her if she could email some student activity updates since we're not having our normal uh, student representative. Um, so she sent me yesterday, um, the RHS Student Council held a canned good drive this past Sunday. They had a drop off location at RHS and at Pearson. There will be, uh, there'll be, we will be in the Santa's parade on Saturday collecting again. Uh, they are virtual. They are attending virtual faculty meeting tomorrow to host a holiday event with the staff. Uh, on December 23rd, they will be distributing food baskets and centerpieces to local families in need. And the student government officers are currently working on a few holiday videos, a giving one, a 2021 goals one, and they completed their NJAS. See community smile application um, are in process of completing. Um, it cut off after that. Um, so that was some student update. Uh, so the only thing I would suggest is whoever is the Riverside liaison for next year is until you get back to normal and have your student um, representative, just email uh, Jennifer Hunter. She's the student government uh, advisor and she'll give you a little blurb update that we can share with everybody um, going forward. All right, thank you, Rose. You're welcome. All right, do we have anything from Delanco PTO? Do you have anything on that, Joe? So uh, Wendy Flanagan, who's on here, did uh, she did send me a report. Uh, Mrs. Flanagan, did you wanna share it or would you rather have me share it? Um, I can share it, it's fine. Um, can you hear me? 
Mm -hmm. yes. and, and we can see it okay. too. <laughs> um, uh, for the PTO, we are still collecting donations in lieu of membership fees. And um, the Delanco PTO is also providing um, lunch for all staff on this Friday. And that's it. All right, thank you very much, appreciate it. Do we have anything from DICER, REC, or Township Committee? Okay, then nobody has spoke up on that. Uh, welcome visitors, and this gives me a chance to give my last president's message, because after this meeting, come January, we'll have ourselves a new president. This has been one heck of a year. We've had a, quite a few things going on. I consider myself extremely lucky because I have had Marissa next to me, you know, as the vice president, and she has been a part of the meetings. And with everything that's going on today, it, it's more than one person can handle because Joe has been overwhelmed with everything going on with COVID and the school closings and trying to get virtual working. And I know the teachers have been extremely overloaded also. So, you know, hopefully moving forward, you know, come January, we can get back to normal. You know, we're going to have three new board members come January. And I'd like to, you know, give a shout out to Rose. Thank you, Rose, for your time. It's been six years. It's been a very good six years with you. We've enjoyed it. Thank you. I'd also like to give a shout out to Stephen Lohr. It's been five years. And I had to think about why it was five years, Stephen. And I remembered, I think you replaced somebody on, you know, school board. I want to thank you very much for your time. It's been appreciated. And unfortunately, Lynn can't be here tonight because she's down in Florida and she's having internet problems. And I did text her and I did say thank you very much for her time. And, you know, and all three of you, you know, you've been an asset to this board. I wish to thank you, you know, from the bottom of our heart our hearts and you know come january we're going to have three new members on and hopefully they'll you know continue the tradition and we'll keep moving forward it is getting extremely difficult financially because we're hitting getting hit with a lot of different bills every month and i i won't go into my long tangents like i usually do but you know we got to keep moving forward and keep doing things you know to make everything better all right moving on uh public comment on agenda items we have um, student recognition, Mr. Jenkins. Oh, I'm sorry about that. Oh, I got yes. a little out of student so, recognition, Joe. So um, thank you. So uh, before we do that, though, I just wanted to add Rose's update about Riverside. I spoke with Robin, the Riverside superintendent. Uh, she did say that Gracie Iwanicki is still the representative and would continue in that role. But because of the fact that the meetings have been uh, virtual and they were in person, of course, for a couple of months, uh, it, Gracie hasn't been able to attend the meetings, but she could potentially attend in the future. Um, so th there will be updates coming through a student representative as well. Uh, and then another update uh, from the PTO, uh, just to echo what Mrs. Flanagan was saying, we really appreciate what the PTO is doing for our staff. So uh, e each year we, we've done a thankful for our staff month over the past few years. Uh, but this year, because of COVID-19, and that's really been at the forefront, of many things that we're doing. Uh, we just weren't able to dedicate the same amount of time to it. So we crunched it into thankful for our staff week. Uh, and, and I reached out to the PTO and they said that they would graciously and very generously provide lunch for our staff. So we really appreciate that. And uh, I just wanted to give a shout out to our staff as well, uh, whether it's administrators, teachers, instructional aides, secretaries, facilities team members, food service, you name it, uh, we are thankful for our staff and we appreciate everything our staff is doing. So Mr. Jenkins, you mentioned that I've been feeling overwhelmed and, and the teachers have. I mean, I, I think that, as you said, it's, it has been quite a year where uh, there's frustration. There are people feeling overwhelmed. There are people feeling just overloaded with the amount of things happening. And uh, I appreciate that we've all worked together as a team to, to get through this the best we can. And we're not through it yet, but uh, we're, we continue to work as a team. So thank you for that. So uh, now on to student recognition, where uh, just a little preamble to that, we haven't done student recognition for a number of months. So uh, as we speak, I actually have certificates in my office from March that we're going to be mailing to students because we have not done student recognition since February. Uh, we had planned on doing that in March. Uh, that didn't happen. And it just kept on getting, uh, it kept going down the list. Well, you know, student recognition is now 17 on the list and now it's 35 on the list and so on because of so many other urgent things happening. 
Uh, but I, I am glad that we're getting back to student recognition now. And so uh, for this time around, uh, instead of having anyone come to the building and, and distribute certificates to them, uh, what we're going to be doing is announcing their names during the meeting, and then the principals will be sending the certificates to the students through the mail. Uh, so that we believe that's the safest way, the healthiest way to do it. So uh, without further ado, I just wanted to take mom a moment to recognize certain students from Pearson. Uh, so I have the list here from Mr. Conti in Mrs. Arangio's class, congratulations to Gianna Garcia. Uh, in Mrs. Crozier's class, congratulations to Lacey Foley. Those are our two kindergarten uh, student recognition recipients. And just to let you know, uh, whether it's uh, kindergarten or any other grade level, we, we, we appreciate everything the students are doing. We know that it's very difficult for them and for their parents. And so these students are being recognized for doing their very best and working very hard during the virtual learning and during the, the short period of hybrid learning that we had. Uh, on to first grade, and that's Miss Smith's class. We have John Carlo Tomawa. He, uh, he goes by Geo. Congratulations, Geo. Uh, in Mrs. Weller's class, we have Evan Maternick. Congratulations to Evan. And now on to second grade, we have Mrs. Lipinski uh, selected Philip Bishop for the honor, and congratulations to Philip. And Mrs. McCann selected Peyton Ogden. So congratulations to Peyton. And moving on to third grade, we have Mrs. Barber's class and it was Shondell Hernandez who was selected. Congratulations to Shondell. And Mrs. Fitzwater's class, it was Ava Plum selected for the honor. Congratulations to Ava. And moving on to fourth grade, we have Mr. Stockton. The student selected was Kayla Pippen. Congratulations to Kayla. Uh, Mrs. Wall Ms. Wallace's class uh, is Joshua Bowman. Congratulations to Joshua. And now last but not least for Pearson is our fifth grade class. And that's uh, Mrs. Brendel and Ms. Letton's class. The student selected was Zachary Plum. And congratulations to Zachary. And uh, we also have Mrs. Guckin's class and the student selected was Olivia Stahl. So congratulations to Olivia. Congratulations to all of our Pearson students for doing a great job during the virtual learning and during the hybrid. And um, as I said, these students will be receiving certificates from Mr. Conti and they will be sent through the mail. Now moving on to Walnut Street Middle School, uh, we're very proud of these students uh, also for working hard during the virtual learning and hybrid. But what, ha what, what we're doing at Walnut is a little different where the students are, are being placed into a certain category that they're being recognized for. So those categories are mathematician, amazing writer, scientist, advisory all-star, athlete, musician, artist, and Walnut whiz kid. So those are the categories and the ones that were selected, uh, I'll read off their names now. So congratulations to the mathematician for the month. That is Sydney Greenidge. Congratulations, Sydney. And congratulations to the amazing writer. Uh, we have two amazing writers for the month for Walnut and that is Ava Perillis and Cyrus Bernaldez. Congratulations to both Cyrus and Ava. Next, we have the scientist of the month, and that's Arabelle Petaway. Congratulations to Arabelle. Uh, the next one is the advisory all-star. And just to let you know what advisory is, uh, these are meeting, meetings that take place early in the morning when students first arrive. It, it's basically taking the place of homeroom where they have a chance to talk about different topics with their teacher and with their classmates. And uh, it's really focused on social emotional learning to help the students grow in that area and learn in that area. So the advisory all-star for this month is Rowan Karkenade. Congratulations to Rowan. We also have two student athletes that were selected and uh, those athletes, I think they know each other, uh, Alyssa Stillwagon and Haley Stillwagon. Congratulations to Alyssa and Haley. I think, I think they've come across to each other from time to time. Um, musician, uh, we have two musicians that were selected. They've, they've been doing a fantastic job in music, and that is Morgan Renson and Michaela Petrosky. So congratulations to Morgan and Michaela. We also have an artist that was selected for this month, and that is John Salerno. Congratulations to John. And uh, last but not least here, we have the Walnut Whiz Kid. And this is just a student who's doing really well all around, uh, showing a well-rounded ability to, 
to just do well, uh, be well behaved and respectful. And that student that, that was selected this time around was Shay Smyers. Congratulations to Shay. So um, with that, Mr. President, uh, that concludes the student recognition for this month. And we're gonna continue doing a uh, student recognition similar to that each month, as long as we're doing a virtual meeting. And if we're doing an in-person meeting that might be live streamed, uh, we're gonna do something similar. Uh, we just, we, we just, um, we are reluctant, we're hesitant to have students and their families come into the, the building and, and gather certificates. Uh, so well, we definitely wanna be mindful of COVID-19 and safety. So anyway, thank you again, Mr. President. Congratulations again. All to right, our thank students. you, sir. It's really good that we can recognize the students again. That makes me very happy. Absolutely. Now we're gonna open this to public comment on agenda items. As I'm looking to see if we've got anyone. Okay, it doesn't appear that we have any com public comment on agenda items. I'd like to close this to the public and we'll turn it over to you again, Mr. Mersinger for superintendent's report. All right, thank you, Mr. Jenkins. So moving on to the superintendent's report, um, a motion is requested to approve the following items, letters A through H, and I will provide some commentary about those items during the questions or comments. So our motion is requested. I, Cameron, will make the motion. Second. Second by Harry. Questions or comments, folks? All right, Mr. Mersinger, you wish to say something? If there, yeah, if there are no questions or comments from the board, I just wanted to um, let, let the, everyone know about what's happening with the required drills. So for example, uh, you'll see there that it's cohort X and cohort Y. That's because when we were doing the hybrid, we had different groups of students in the building at different times, and we were, we were required to do drills with each different group. Uh, so Mr. Conti and Mrs. Noble took care of that. We also did communication drills. Uh, both principals did that, as well as uh, I had sent out a district level communication drill to make sure that families could receive the message. Now, what we're also doing is sending out emergency information verification forms. Uh, this is something that we do annually. So families will be receiving those over the next few days. And so if, if a parent says, well, I, I haven't received any of the emails or I haven't gotten the texts and so on, that is absolutely the perfect time to update the information and share that with our secretaries. Uh, we also have two items on here related to the police department. Uh, these are annual approvals. The memorandum of agreement uh, is a document that talks about how we are going to cooperate with the police uh, and, and vice versa, that we work together in conjunction for, for, the, for the good of the students and the community. And then the memorandum of understanding that specifically focuses on the fact that we have video surveillance and the police have access to that. So uh, that's that's all the additional information that I that I would share at this time. So thank you. All right. As I said, any more questions or comments from, from board members? Question. So for this is Fira Jarmo for updating the emergency um, information. Uh, you send that out through email or you mail out requests uh, to do that? No, so that's that's a great question. So uh, we send that out hard copy through US mail because if they're not getting the emails and the texts and the phone calls, then you know we, we it's our understanding that sending a hard copy would have to be the most logical way to get that information to them. But I'm still also gonna send a Blackboard message saying uh, that the verification form is coming but we know that some families might not get it. They might not get my electronic communication. So we're sending it in hard copy. And that's what we do each year. It's an annual update. If, if, <clears> there, <throat> um, annual if there's no, no response to the hard copy, what is the next step? No response to the hard copy means that uh, they, they have all their information up to date. Uh, so the hard copy letter says, uh, if, if your information is up to date, there are no further steps. Uh, if their information is not up to date, then they need to notify the district. And I, I give the contact information there. If they were not at that address, then the post office will return a letter so we would know that they changed their address. Yes, and if the address is changed, that also raises a question of residency because uh, sometimes an address will change within Delanco, but if the address changed 
and they're no longer in Delanco, that's, uh, that also becomes a residency question. So true. All right, uh, I have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. All right, thank you, Joe. Thank you. Instruction and program committee report was Mrs. Whitney. Uh, the committee chairperson reports the following. She has no report. So moving on to that, we'll go to finance committee report. Mrs. Gonteski. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I'd like to make a motion for item A through N as listed on the agenda with a few footnotes, if you don't mind. I'd love to hear them. Um, I would like to make special, put special attention on to item D. Um, the, the submission and the acceptance of the safety grant. Um, item E, the donation of 910 books from Simon & Schuster, which was facilitated by one of our Delanco residents. Um, item G, one of the students listed was not budgeted. Item K and L were also non-budgeted items. And that concludes All that. Right. And you make a motion. I need a second. Yeah. Second by Marissa. Second by Marissa. Questions or comments, folks? Okay. The only I, thing. Go, well, ahead. Go ahead, Vera. Okay. I try to get all my questions in before. Um, and I did ask a lot of questions through email. But I, I go to the last minute looking through everything. And, you know, I'm trying trying to understand more of the financial side of it. So I, I didn't understand why on page 16 of the board packet, which is 112 pages, on page 16 it said capital reserve account, zero dollars, maintenance reserve account, zero dollars, emergency reserve account, zero dollars. Okay, um, that I can't answer because I don't have that in front of me. What we're concerned about right now is this finance committee report that we're doing right now, Vera. Do you have any questions on that? That a part of everything we're approving is, is all that financial information. So why is it zero dollars in the capital reserve account? Vera, I don't account? have that up either, but we can discuss that tomorrow or I just want to ask you when I'm when I'm approving items on the finance report. Um, or for the, for my questions on this, what, what does that fall under here? Is, does that fall under the finance committee report or does that fall under accept reports of secretary and treasurer, which are in agreement? Like which part am I, I what you're looking at, but we can go over that tomorrow and we can do a phone call if you want. Right. Well, I just want to know to, in terms of voting, am I voting? Voting to um, to verify that that we have zero dollars. No, you are not. What you were voting on is the finance committee report and what is in front of you A through N right now. Okay, I was just wondering, like that was sent to me. You know, that was in our um, packet. So, okay, so my my question specifically about what we have here. I just have a couple questions. Not a problem. For the um, for letter D, the security grant. The twenty-two thousand eighty dollars. Are we looking to? Of course, we want to accept free money. Of course, are we looking to spend beyond that for security we, equipment? We would love to spend beyond that. We'd love to be able to enclose where, with when somebody comes into the school, and this had been discussed uh, beginning of the year and last year about a vestibule where people could come in, but the. Uh, grant that came from the state went to high schools at uh, K through 12 districts. It didn't go to K through eight districts. I'm, I'm still believe that the, you know, vestibule is on, but $22,000 really, really isn't going to buy a tremendous amount of security equipment. I wasn't involved in that conversation about the vestibule. So before we spend additional money, can I be included? I don't know if that was a finance committee um, conversation, but I would like to be included in any conversations having to do with additional money for security equipment. Is that okay? 
that would be fine. You know, as of January, everybody will be able to pick their new committees or request to the president what committee they would like to be on also. My other question is letter J. It's about the teacher assistant for the um, Burlington County Special Services. <laughs> That's my dog ringing the bell there. Um, so because there, this is for a teacher assistant, am I assuming that, that they have in-person classes there? I'm not, I'm not 100% sure what this is for. I know that it is for two students. And uh, Joe, can you answer this a little better? So um, when it comes to this, uh, we cannot assume any in-person instruction for any of these tuition contracts. These placements and the services that are provided, uh, we're approving them under what it would be under typical circumstances. Uh, right now, uh, all districts are under atypical circumstances. So uh, for students who need one-on-one -on -one aids, sometimes the one-on-one -on -one aid is assisting virtually. Sometimes they are assisting in person. Uh, so I'd have to look back through my emails, but I believe the last email I received from uh, special services was, was that they are they are currently virtual. So, you know, I'll, let me let me just look that up. It's only going to take a minute. Um, well, actually, okay. According to this, it says... BCIT and BCSSSD are uh, currently in person, but let me just check one more area. Let's see. Um, okay. Yeah, so that, that wasn't the most recent. Uh, I received an email uh, just last week now saying that BCIT and BCSSSD are going 100% remote uh, as of December 7th. So they are currently remote. But either way, okay, so, no, so we still remote. need to pay out that money, even if there's not an assistant working with the student? Well, the assistant would be working with the student. If an assistant is not working with the student, no, we would not pay. And this is part of their IEP, is that correct? Yes, yes. Okay, I still have a question mark about that, but we'll, um, the other thing I have a question about is letter K and L for the parent transportation contract. I'm assuming that L is more just because they have to drive further out? It very possibly could be, and it's actually a benefit to the school district if the parents transport their children because it actually costs us less than it would transportation if we had to provide a bus for them. Oh, I, I definitely agree. I remember the um, we had a bus going out for $45,000 for one year. That's like a, a staff person who paid for the bus. So I do appreciate it when we have those parent transportation contracts. Those are all my um, questions. Thank you. All right, thank you, Vera. We do have one, another case of a uh, um, out of uh, not budgeted for for another thirty thousand nine hundred three dollars. And folks, you've heard me get on my little bandwagon here. You know, the state. I'm a firm believer the state should be picking up a lot more of the special. Ed education costs because the special education costs are having a tremendous impact on the small K through eight districts to the point where it's taking away from other things that we can do with our students. And, you know, I'm all for helping every student out there, but I just think the state needs to pick up more of the responsibility, but enough of my little bandwagon there. Um, all those in favor? It's like Vince had a comment. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Vince. Thank you, uh, Mr. Sala. Hey, uh, Mr. President, just going back to uh, Vera answered a asked a couple of questions I was going to ask, but I was uh, the transportation contracts for parents. Did that start this year? The parental transportation? You mean with these two parents, or just in general? They're both, actually. Uh, we've actually been doing it with parents for quite a few years. Okay. You know, as long as I've been on the board, we've been doing it. You know, whenever we can. Customary. These... This is Harry. It's customary practice. And also with some of the special ed, that's a concern that I've had. But I know that, and actually um, the superintendent from BCIT and special services was presented at a, a county meeting and he mentioned, um, and I think some of the teachers and teaching assistants actually go into the home and statewide that's been happening in various districts. Um, to get special educators into the home if need be. 
So it varies district by district. That's, that's just info that I was going to fill us in on a little later, but it's pertinent now. All right. Thank you, Harry. Anything else, Vince? No, that's all I had. Thank you. All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. I'm, I'm splitting my vote, so I always wait till the end. Okay, go ahead, Vera. S is D through L, except for J. No is A through C. Can you start over? You want... Okay, the yes vote, yes vote is letter D through letter L, except for J. Mm -hmm. No is A through C and J, M, and the letter N. Okay. All right, thank you, Vera. Okay, moving on. Operation and Facilities Committee report. Mr. Calabire. Thank you, Mr. President. Operation Facilities report for the month of November 2020. Uh, routine maintenance activities. School is closed due to coronavirus except for two weeks. Yard care, mowing, weed whacking, leaf collection, completion of work orders is needed. Special project activities. Painted social distancing, social distancing dragon feet on sidewalks outside of both schools at all entrances. That's pretty neat. Uh, replaced steel decking on the old playground at Pearson. Old ones were rotting out. That's good. Change motor on rooftop exhaust fan at Walnut in room 114. Completing CUSAC health and safety evaluation of school buildings and made repairs needed. Made new fire exit maps for all classrooms, offices and auxiliary rooms at both schools. A six month at best inspection. Running sinks, water fountains, flushing toilets uh, once in the morning, once in the afternoon and again at night. Also dumping water down all floor drains to keep any harmful organisms from going growing in our water supply. That's all I have. All right. Thank you, Vince. All right. Uh, policy committee report. Mr. Litwack. There is no uh, policy report this evening. All right. Thank you very much. Personnel committee report. Mr. Jenkins. Thank you, Mr. Jenkins. I will make a motion to approve the following. A, a leave of absence for Michael Coguin, supervisor of buildings and grounds with a start date of 11-16-20 and an anticipated end date of 3-2-21. And B, a leave of absence for Melissa Barbara, Pearson teacher, with an anticipated start date of 329-21 and an anticipated end date of 630-21. I will make the motion. Stephen, second. Second from Stephen. Questions or comments? Yeah, I have a comment, uh, Ms. Barber, that it, we're approving it's, it's quite a ways out. Is that normal practice that far out? rather than closer to the actual date and time? I don't know any of the conditions on it. And, you know, Joe, do you wish to elaborate on this? I would say it's normal practice, depending on circumstances. Uh, sometimes you approve a leave uh, basically right before it happens. Sometimes you approve it months before it happens. It depends on the circumstances. Well, that that's it, because of the atypical circumstances that we have. I don't know. Um, I don't know. I don't know that anything could be to the board's benefit by doing it early rather than waiting. And nothing against Miss Barber, you know, that's not the point. It's just how are we going to operate? And is there? And that that's all. It, you know, we making um, and and what that does in our budget. That's all. Well, approving her leave is uh, definitely an essential part of the the process. Uh, because when she's on leave, we will be filling that position with a long-term substitute as well. Uh, so, you know, that's, that's the next step for Mr. Conti to select a candidate for that. You know, so um, sometimes it is months in advance, though. Yes. We yeah, I just thought you used to see it that in advance, that's all. And you know, we're under, uh, it, it doesn't matter. I mean, it, it's just that we're still negotiating and contracts and everything's up in the air with some stuff. It, uh, it shouldn't matter. It just seemed early to me. All right. Okay. Thank you, Harry. Any other questions? Okay. This is a roll call vote. Mr. Caliguire. Oh, yes. Ms. Dharma. Mr. 
go back to her. Ms. Dormo, how do you yes. make so Can you hear me? Now I can, yes. Uh, this is this what I do with my students. We're like, what, what, yeah. <laughs> That's just Ms. remote Ms. teaching, guys. Hey, there you are. Mrs. Gunteski? Yes. Um, Mr. C. Jenkins? Yes. Mr. Phil Jenkins? Yes. Mrs. Karamanugian? Yes. Mr. Litwack? Yes. Mr. Lohr? Yes. Motion carries, thank you. Uh, Board of Education liaison reports. Do you have anything more to report, Rose? Um, just what, uh, for those that don't already know, Riverside is in full remote, just as we are with their anticipated, anticipated return date is the same as us, January 19th. Um, their Board of Education meeting for this month is tomorrow and it is in person. Um, but other than that, I have no other information. All right, thank you very much, Rose. Uh, New Jersey School Board, Mr. Litwack. Yeah, I have quite a bit because the county associations are meeting uh, every two weeks. And we also just had a county-wide meeting as well as I had a director's meeting. So a lot of the information, since this is all since our last meeting. And some of it, Joe, if anything is change because my first goes back to the 16th of November and I'm just going to highlight this was a um, a county why they call it cow a county meeting from the all over the state um, and that's the I guess the chapter 44 versus chapter 78 as far as negotiations with new health benefits and there was supposed to be automatic enrollment. Uh, Joe, you may know something more about the CUSAC. The governor had vetoed it, and I know there's a strong push to bring it back again in front of them with the CUSAC. Have you heard anything on that? Uh, uh, yes, Mr. Litwack, thank you. So CUSAC, yeah, did, first and foremost, yeah, uh, is an annual uh, review process and every three years, it's a full review. Uh, so this year, our district has a full review. Uh, members of my organization, uh, school boards, NJEA, you name it, every organization in the state is lobbying Trenton to, to postpone the CUSAC review for the current year. Now, uh, they have not fully postponed it, uh, but we, we as, as a district have gotten a one month postponement uh, based on a message I had sent uh, to the county office a few weeks ago, uh, th their system was down and I reached out to them and said, you know, we, we want to complete the work for CUSAC, but we can't even access the system. And the lady who responded said, well, you know, let us know if you need any kind of accommodations. So I wrote back and said, well, actually we do. I, I would love to have a little bit more time to complete this work because we've been focused on so many other things other than CUSAC right now. And yeah. so they did a one month extension uh, until January 15th instead of December 15th, which is why the CUSAC, uh, there's nothing related to CUSAC on the agenda tonight. Okay, um, it, yeah, it was vetoed, but there was, to the, the, there was I'll kind of, the board in the, in the, at a future date so that the board sees the whole CUSAC review, but it won't be approved until January now. Okay, because they were talking about resubmitting it because there was such a, uh, yeah, you know, a, a strong demand of making it optional and, um, and the, the difference, I don't know, you know, that we have to be aware of is going from chapter 44, you know, of the health cares, the health benefits, and for so there may be a large financial gap. It just depends, you know, every district is going to be different. It's just something to be aware of. Um, and, and then how long, uh, the question we need to ask, ask is, how long does it affect the line go? Um, and Vicki, maybe you'll be able to get at some point numbers for us. That was what was suggested, uh, the, the BA getting numbers about how does it affect the line go? And you probably already have those numbers, I would think, Vicki. Am I correct? Um, yeah, I have, a, I have prepared a schedule for that. Yeah, yeah. And here's something interesting because negotiations and 
uh, hopefully there's um, of just having, this is something that other district has tried uh, that because of the turmoil and the uncertainty at all levels, they just had a sidebar agreement for a one year agreement. And they, this was, I think Garwood. And what they did was they just settled on a 2.9 one year agreement. That was just a sidebar to get us through, you know, that them through to be able to negotiate with more valid information. So it's just something maybe that needs to be thought about. I'm just giving you information that's coming from around the state. Um, for sports, they're talking about sports. It's more, I think, for uh, high school, but that there'll be four seasons, not just three. What they're doing with um, events that are not, uh, where they're like hockey and where they're not even on the school grounds or somewhere else, they're just saying, we don't have anything to do with it, forget it. Uh, they're talking about basketball, being a 15 game season, wrestling, uh, they're not gonna have have, if they do have it, it'll just be dual meets, no big quad meets or districts or the like. So the protocols in place for sporting events, but there's no real, you know, the question is who monitors it and if there's non-compliance, what happens? Uh, so they were doing away, like I say, all third-party facilities, bowling, ice hockey, etc. cetera, uh, totally remote. Um, there are questions if a district's totally remote and the people play sports. Um, I'm just going to go over the highlights from this. They talked about changing schedules, extending. I think I may have even mentioned this to, to Mr. Mersinger at one point about changing the schedules, the holiday schedules. Um, some districts have done that for different reasons. And they also said that our district and every district should um, want to know, do we have certified contract tracers in-house and outside of school contacts? So that's just, and I think we do to our nurses. Is that correct, Mr. Mersinger? We, we do have our nurses conducting a significant amount of the contact tracing. Uh, just just so that everyone's aware, though, uh, that was not the original plan set forth by the health department. Uh, we were told from the beginning that we would be part of the process, but that the health department themselves conduct the, the contact tracing. Yeah, they're having a hard uh, that time. That has not been the case. I know in New Jersey, something like 76% of the people that are contacted don't respond. And, well, that's, um, yeah, that's another aspect of it. Yeah, 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 that... You know, even if you have it, would it, it once again, it's uh, the follow through and what are the consequences? So, okay. Um, here are some of the things, and these are issues that the board and the public uh, need to be thinking about um, is summer school. What, um, how what might we use summer school to get kids back up to speed? Um, the state still trying to have test results, that whole issue. Okay. And then there was another county meeting on the 30th of November. And now this was, they had three different superintendents, two from Bergen County and one from Ocean. And they were, it was, they were discussing testing. And for us, and it was interesting because they had three different points of view. One was named Michael Jordan, Brian Gettens, and Dr. Melissa McCuskey, who was from Pine, in Ocean County, Pinelands um, Regional, that district. And Jordan. The, um, one of the things that at a national level, the federal te testing has said, hey, it, it, we're not going to have valid testing, so forget about it states, you know, giving us information, they're not even looking for it, but that each individual state, I guess, has to respond. And the thing that we're focusing on more now, and rightfully so, is the social and emotional learning and food insecurity, that those are, you know, they're jumping the line of, you know, 
testing, you know, as we're talking about high stakes, uh, putting food and protein in children and people is pretty high stakes to me, even with hamburger, low stake. The um, AP testing online with proctors, local testing, public accountability. They don't know if a parent is taking the test alongside the student. There's all kinds of issues. Um, and these are happening not just in Delanco, but all over, or they're happening all over, and we need to be aware of them. Uh, how are we able to upset, uh, assess what's going on? And like I said, special ed, here it is, going into homes to do assessments, et cetera. You know, that's happening some places in special ed. Um, and the the idea that every district is going to be different when they stop where the kids were in testing cycles Hi. and Hi. you know Hi. what is Mark's going to mean you know everything is just sporadic and Joe I don't know if you're familiar with the Fordham Institute best practices it's something that um, it was highlighted and they said that it uh, they they. I guess really went over the pros and cons of hybrid, hybrid remote and other models and uh, who's doing, you know, the equity issues that still exist. And then there was the, this is the, I'm gonna jump to this one. This is the county level as well. And this was, and everybody and anybody that's on the board is welcome to attend these, and they're virtual as, um, at this point. And the um, RC, uh, special services and RCBC have a special program going on for high functioning students that might be autistic or on the scale and about them working uh, independently uh, it's a totally new program for 18 to 21 year olds. And actually Dr. Nagy and I had met, I guess, just before the school year started last year and uh, discussed some of the things. So I'm even working with people that that same population, what happens when they max out at 21 of looking at from 21 to 26. So that's a new program in the county and they, they're they already in the county, a uh, hundred kids that they're, doing that have uh, special needs that they're doing a real transition program for them. So, and then there was a um, presentation that was very, very interesting. Um, Jesse Adams reminded us about the end of the year board ethics training and other trainings and that he's a resource for us. But there was a Dr. Melissa Saden, S-A-D-I-N, She's with the Somerville District, but the, this was a program that like I say that any board member could have attended, um, that it's about trauma, building resi uh, resilience in challenging times and about uh, trauma sensitive resources. And um, it was very interesting. Joe, are you familiar with like ACEs, they call it the uh, Adverse Childhood Experiences? Yes, very much so. Um, we yeah. actually had uh, trauma-informed training for teachers uh, this year, early in the year, as part Great. of CL, Social Emotional Learning Initiative. And uh, I've also gone to separate trainings myself to learn about the types of trauma that, are, that our students and, and many students go through depending on circumstances, uh, whether it's, uh, I mean, it's, it, I don't want to go through specific details of the training. Right. It is, it is very eye-opening uh, to see a lot of the challenges that, that are facing our students. Uh, well, I, don't know if it, I don't know if it was this person, Dr. Melissa Satan, but she's worked, at, it sounded like about a half dozen or more Burlington County schools specifically, even though she worked in the Somerville district. And it was an interesting, because it can be a single event, you know, that's what uh, the trauma, it was very, very interesting about the trauma could be at the household level, uh, systematically occurring, or environmentally, and uh, um, that was very eye-opening. And I, I'll send you. I don't. I think I started to, but I may have forgotten to send you. What was like? I took some screenshots 
that were kind of interesting and just some of the notes from there. Um, and they did about how it really affects the one area of the brain, the hippocampus, that is a reactive. And they mentioned to try and develop positive policies about developmental ages and that to focus positively on gratitude, laughter, and hope and language, code of conduct, seek to heal. This is important, folks. Seek to heal, not punish children. And that's, a, for some of us, that's a different mentality. Um, you know, it's uh, if something's not going right. We have to assign blame or guilt to someone when a lot of times everyone's just healing now. And the teachers are incredible what they're doing and that there apparently are some grants available for trauma training. That's at the county level. At the state level, what was um, pertinent, let me get that set of notes. And sorry to take so long, but I thought this is pertinent stuff, and at least I'm hearing this from some of the uh, other systems that are available at the school board level to get this information. So, um, I'm sorry about that, but I've got two identical notebooks here, and I went through this this afternoon and put uh, put clips, paper clips. Here it is, and I highlighted it. So here we go. This was um, the statewide directors meeting. Well, uh, that, um, I may have already given you that information. That. I'm sorry that I'm uh, causing a delay here. Let's see if it's in there. Okay, this is it. Here we go. Yeah, here we go. The. Um, for the school boards association, there was the auditor's report given and the school board uh, had a surplus of $395,000 from revenues, you know, minus expenses. There was 333,000 spent on fixed assets. Uh, there was a fund balance statement. Everything was, they had a net position of 4.4 .4 million of unrestricted money. Um, their problem, likewise, is unfunded uh, pension liabilities statewide. Um, they said that workshop this coming year most likely is going to be virtual again. Um, coming in January, and this should be something our new board members should be aware of, there, as well as our old board members, is going to be a report about the psychological impact of the pandemic on New Jersey students. So that is something that, that we should be looking for. And hopefully there'll be some help of what we can do from there. And hopefully there'll also be some money that'll be coming. Um, the new board members, and Vicki, did we do that? Did we get that? What was it, $303 that they needed? To, so that all of our, so that 25 slots were the new board members, were we able to do anything with that? You mean for the training? Well, for that, that we, the, the training that was done during, not the training, the, um, the conference. October, Conference. Conference. They actually the provide a lot of um, training materials already for the new board members. Yeah, I know. But did, they, did we do that additional or not? We did not. Okay. We did not. There was another $303 and everyone. Okay. And that's what uh, 
they, they've done. You're right. They've moved some of that because I, I asked about it specifically into the new board member. They'll have a virtual training with their uh, and multi training with their uh, uh, Vince, who does their main uh, training. Um, Jonathan Pushman, who's a governmental agent, see, he, um, he had said that what's happening here, that they signed off on the grant spending from October 31st, 2020 to June 30th, 2021, signed into law. Basically, it was flat spending again. There was no new money. It was fully funded. They said that 180 million coronavirus relief fund was coming. Six, and of that, six million was for reopening schools, six million for the digital divide, 20 million for learning loss and uh, SEL learning. And I think they, they kept in school for you. Um, so that. And there's, this is the last page here. Um, and that's about it. That's the, uh, they were advocating to have a focus being on learning skills, advocacy skills, aspire, achieve. This was from, uh, that was a program that Dr. Nagy was doing. And uh, I actually spoke with, I'm on the council there, someone today called they're having on Friday uh, a meeting that I wouldn't be able to attend, a virtual meeting. But some of the th same things we're talking about going on statewide, some have answers to them and some don't. So that's, you know, I'm sorry to be long-winded about it, but that's the information I've been out gathering that I hope helps moving forward. All right, so thank, thank, you. You. thank you. Thank you, Harry. Thank you, Harry. Okay, moving on, old business, board member mandatory training. Uh, Vicki, who has not taken any board member mandatory training? <laughs> I'm going to do it. Okay. Cameron seems to be the only one that hasn't done it. Okay. Is there a, a date it has to be done by, Vicki? New Year's Eve. Oh. Uh, <laughs> she's shaking her head. You want to do it ASAP? Because there'll be no one at. December 31st. December 31st. Okay. Thank you, Vicki. All right. Yeah, yeah. Board member. What's up, uh, Harry? If you wait until then, you're going to have a problem. What? Because the school, if you have a problem, the school board's association will be closed. <clears throat> so. I'm, I'm not waiting until the last minute, Harry. I'll probably do it over the weekend. I'm busy with work and finals. You know what I mean? Oh, no, no, I understand that. I'm just saying that they, they made note of it because specifically because there was a problem, not just here, but people waiting the last minute and no one's there. And Jesse Adams is the one that took note of it. I remember he uh, brought this up at one of the meetings we had with him, I believe. Yeah, so that's why, that's where it came from. It came back from him just recently. Okay. Right. Thank you, Harry. Thank you. You're welcome. Board You're welcome. member communication protocols. I think everybody got the email from Joe about that. And, you know, I think that's something that we do need to, you know, definitely be involved in or be a little bit because Joe and Vicki are so overwhelmed with what's going on. I, I really think we need to spell out. And I do believe that school boards has some programs on that. Joe, correct me if I'm wrong here. Uh, <clears throat> yes, Mr. Jenkins. And also we are, are overwhelmed, but what I like to call it is controlled chaos. Uh, you know, the, there's controlled chaos and there's just chaos. Uh, we haven't reached the just plain chaos. Uh, it's controlled. So, uh, you know, as, as much as we are overwhelmed, we are still getting the job done. Uh, but, but no matter what, uh, when it comes to the board and uh, communication protocols, definitely have, uh, we have advice from school boards, from our solicitor. I've talked to many of my colleagues, and this is something that really benefits the board uh, when it comes to communicating with one another, communicating with me and Vicky, communicating with the community, you name it. And it's, it's something other districts have put in place. So 
the ones that I shared last month and what I shared this month are the same. Uh, what I would recommend is that uh, uh, we're not going to just rush something into place now, but recommend that we just continue this conversation so that in January, uh, we discuss it with the new board members and we continue it, uh, I would say in February, have some kind of a training or meeting with Jesse Adams so that he can talk to us about uh, ethics, roles and responsibilities, communication practices, and so on over the course of, uh, let's say maybe one or two trainings, I think that would be beneficial for the board. Very definitely, I agree 100%. All right, thank you, Joe. Okay, that pretty well covers old business. Does anyone else have anything for old business? Okay, that ends up moving on to new business. Uh, reorganization meeting scheduled for Wednesday, January 6th. That's where we're gonna be picking new president and vice president and moving on. So everybody, please mark that on your calendar. Okay, opening this up to public comment on non-agenda items. Yes, I have something for new business. Okay, go ahead. We'll go um, back to new business again, though. Okay, so um, in January, in January, we also um, vote on contracts, professional services like the solicitor, all those different um, professional contracts. When I went to Delanco.com at the bottom under the um, heading of business office where it says bid press request for proposals and I clicked on that there was nothing there does that mean there are new no new contracts coming up in January it's just the people who are already approved or already or uh, still in a three-year contract or why aren't there any bids over there hey Joe can you answer that or Vicki I, I actually discussed this with James uh, a couple months ago Vicki was in on that email as well. Uh, for the services that you're asking about, Ms. Darmo, uh, I had asked James, he said that we were in multi-year contracts for those services. So that means we're, it's, it's not up for bid for the upcoming year. Now, Vicki, no, you can- Nothing is up for bid this year. Not that I'm aware of, no. Um, and it, it was something that was discussed. Vicki, do you have any other info about that? No, I, no, there's nothing up for bid at this point. Yeah, I mean, it, it, and that RFP process, the request for proposal would have happened much sooner than now. You know, it, it's December 9th. So, you know, we would have gone through it. That's why I brought it up to James and, and Vicki and said, you know, what's what's the status of this? And we, if, since we have the multi-year deals, uh, we, wouldn't, we wouldn't be putting it up for this year, but that doesn't mean it wouldn't happen for the next year. I would also in the future like to discuss having these contracts not be multi-year. I, I need to research that. I don't, I don't know what the, um, besides maybe being common practice, I don't see why they can't be approved year to year, but I need to research that. My other new business uh, issue I'm gonna bring up is um, the co connectivity issues. Can you give a little um, report on, I know I saw the emails that things are looking better, but do you know what caused those connect to kind of uh, the, the dropping of the signal during class? What was that about? So we, we've been discussing this with uh, various consultants, uh, tech, tech consultants, as well as legal consultants, uh, insurance, you name it. I mean, we've taken many steps to make sure that we're following the correct process. Uh, when we've discussed this with the consultants, uh, it, you know, it's it's my understanding that networks like have issues uh, in, in any organization. Networks will have issues. Uh, our network was experiencing issues, uh, and when it comes to the cause of those issues, that's something that I can share in a report with the board. Uh, but sometimes, uh, like cybersecurity, for example, is is just as uh, confidential as building security. So something like that, if it, let, let's say hypothetically, it's a cybersecurity issue, I wouldn't just uh, discuss it here in a public session. Um, but no matter what, uh, the issue was with the service provider, it was with our network firewall, it was with our network, all sorts of technological things that quite honestly, um, I wish I understood more about, but uh, I'm not the expert on it. But I can provide a, a better update to the board uh, related to this topic because when it comes to our, our technology security, 
uh, it's not typically something that we would discuss in public. Um, speaking of security, my district just sent out just sent out updates on how on how to make Google Meet more secure. It just was on our radar this week, and I can talk to you more about that privately. My last thing I want to ask about is um, attendance and participation rates. I'm always a big believer in um, if students aren't participating, we have to have a procedure in place to follow up and not simply say, well, they're not participating. So could you give me some information on participation rates in terms of attendance? Sure, um, I could give you the attendance rate. Uh, that's 96% at both buildings, uh, which is, is a great rate. Uh, we were talking about possibly uh, developing a goal on that, but uh, we really only have four percentage points to work with. So I would say that we don't really need to develop a goal when our current attendance rate is 96%. You're saying every day you have 96% of students attending that's, class? That's an average rate. You mean like, um, what, what do you mean like, I don't understand what you're saying. Uh, it's an average, meaning that we've had multiple school days and hundreds of students are attending during those school days. And we, we develop an average in our information database based on that. Well, that's very high. That's it is very excellent. high. And, I, and I'm, I'm, happy, I'm happy to report that. Yeah, that's that's what I think. We wouldn't need, really need to good. develop a, a um, we wouldn't need to develop a goal on that to help improve that. Not that four percentage points are meaningless, but 96 is very high. Um, when, when it comes to participation, that is going to be different based on the teacher, based on the subject, based on the moment in the day. So we don't have the same type of concise data collection for actual participation, but we do know the students are in attendance. Uh, we have a 96% attendance rate. Now, they logged on. Lo yes. They log on. Okay. Yes. So okay, I'm going good. to be discussing with Mr. Conti and Mrs. Noble and this is an ongoing discussion with us, of you know, can we get a snapshot of what participation looks like in that, in that 96%? And the reason I say it's an average is, you know, today it might have been 98%, but yesterday it was 95% and so on. Mm -hmm. um, but no matter what, you know, what is the participation during that 96% rate? And um, the, t I, the teachers themselves are going to be the ones to be able to identify that, uh, not our student information database. So the teacher might see, well, you know, I have uh, 20 students in attendance, but out of those 20 students, I haven't really heard from X, Y, and Z. So that's something that I think we can get a snapshot of uh, that I can share with the board. All right, thank you, Joe. Is that all, Vera? Yeah. Vera? Yeah. Okay, moving back on to public comment on non-agenda items. Does anybody have any questions? Mike Templeton. Uh, Mike Templeton, you raised your hand. Go ahead, Mike. Hi there. Good evening. I wasn't fast enough with the mute button at the top of the meeting. But, uh, That's okay. You saw your hand up. That was good. <laughs> hey. um, anyway, I want to, the, to commend the, uh, the school system, the teachers, the aides, uh, the staff administration. Uh, and parents and students and uh, their families for uh, slogging it through for the last 10 months. Uh, uh, as you said, you have been uh, doing this on the fly and kind of nationwide making up as we go. Uh, I think we're in for another couple more months of this, uh, maybe four to six more months of this, but uh, uh, I just want to express uh, appreciation and the, the good work that everyone, top to bottom, students, family, teachers, everyone, uh, to making this all work and make them, making the best of it all. Um, I was on a conference call with the county health uh, today at uh, 10 o'clock um, in Delanco, um, uh, as, as we've been hearing uh, for the last month or so, things have been uh, um, getting worse. Um, and looking at some numbers, when the county started counting the COVID positives in the respective municipalities countywide uh, back on March 31st, uh, from March 31st to November 9th, a month ago, Delanco had 90 
COVID positives, 90 people cumulatively during those 223 days. In the last 30 days in Delanco, we've had 68 positives. So right, you know, in town, down the street, next door, we, you know, it's, it's here. So uh, just to continue on, uh, like I said, we've got a couple more months, we've got to deal with this, be careful. There's a lot of, uh, uh, probably not the best choice of words, teasing as far as a vaccine. Uh, again, they talked about that on the county, uh, on the conference call this morning. There was a representative from Virtua uh, Health System on, on the call, and they said from the preliminary numbers of vaccine that they would uh, receive, um, the person mentioned they have 13,000 employees in the Virtua System, and they would only get enough vaccine for 1,000 of their employees, uh, and they don't know when that would be. Um, there is discussion. Uh, uh, everyone's curious as to what the priority would be, and several times during the call today, they mentioned the teachers might be in one of the earlier uh, top tiers uh, after medical personnel, EMTs, first responders, uh, hospital personnel, and so forth. So they might be bundled in with that group. But uh, I think we've got a little ways to wait uh, as far as a vaccine until that uh, until that shot hits your arm. Uh, we're just going to have to be patient and really. Uh, uh, apply just the basic practices uh, that have gotten us this, this far. Uh, the hospital numbers are higher, uh, have surpassed what we experienced last spring. Uh, so this is not the time to break a leg or have another illness come up, come up. Just be, you know, everyone, please be careful. Now is not the time to go to the hospital for something else. Um, and uh, let's see what other of my notes here. Uh, distribution, they're still working on that statewide. A lot's going to depend on the cold storage uh, that these, this vaccine requires and how that's going to come down and what, what facilities are going to be able to support that. So there's a lot of uh, unknowns out there still. Uh, be patient, be safe um, through the holidays. Um, keep it close with your family and uh, let's everyone be healthy so uh, next year we can be back to normal and have a, you know, have a, have a normal holiday. So, but again, thanks again to uh, everyone here uh, on this virtual meeting tonight for all the good work and all your patience uh, getting through this school year and, and continuing on. So thank you. All right, thank you very much, Mike. Do we have, thank you, Mayor. Do we have anyone else? Uh, Mr. President, yes. if uh, just real quick, if there's no one else from the public that wants to make a comment, um, I just want to take the, the opportunity uh, to thank the citizens of Delanco uh, for the opportunity to serve on the board these past five years. Um, it's been an honor. Uh, while I did not have children in the district, uh, I still believe that I had a stake in the, as a member of this community in the success of this district and its students. Um, I believe that the school district is the heart of every community. Um, I know that COVID has put on hold several of our, our initiatives. Um, but I encourage the board to continue to make bold moves. Uh, keep the discussion and the debates going, even if they go to one in the morning. Um, and uh, thank you to the fellow, uh, to you fellow board members. Uh, it's been a pleasure to serve with you, and I wish you all the best. All right. Thank, thank you, Steve. Thank, thank you, Steve. All right, I'm going to close this meeting to the public, and I'm going to open it up to any board members that have anything to say. Well, I'd like to uh, commend Rose and Steve, uh, especially having worked with them for five, six years. Also, Lynn, the last three years, um, guys worked hard and, you know, good citizens. So it's nice to see. And uh, I think we all benefit from getting more people involved and uh, getting young people involved in the democratic system. So thanks for your for your input, your help, your decisions, and uh, your efforts. Thank you, time and energy. Thanks, Harry. Thank you, thanks, Harry. Harry. I would also like to um, to say thank you to each one of you. I've enjoyed working alongside of you, and you know it will be you all will be missed tremendously. I, I enjoyed watching each one of us kind of grow into the position that we had on the board. Um, and it's, it's sad to see each of you go, but I am certainly excited that you'll get to 
start that ne the next season, we'll call it, of your life to um, participate in things that you were looking forward to, whether they be personal or um, private, you know, endeavors. So I wish you all the, the very best. And um, I look forward to seeing you guys uh, do great things outside of the school board. Thank you. Thank you, Marissa. Thank you, Marissa. And uh, Phil, one more thing. I also want to congratulate you on your retirement. <laughs> hey, oh, yeah. I got lots of free time now. Thank you. <laughs> all right, everybody, I'd like to thank you all. You know, hopefully 2021 will be a much better year. Uh, thank you, Mayor Templeton, for everything that you've been doing as a township and everyone on Township Committee that's been doing. I'm definitely a positive thinker moving forward. I think we're going to, you know, things are going to get much, much better and things will work out. On that note, we have to go to executive session to discuss district goals and CSA evaluation. So I need a motion and a second to go into executive session. Aye, right, Cameron will make the motion. I'll second. Second by Stephen Lohr. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to go into executive session. Uh, anticipated time in executive session would be probably anywhere between 45 minutes to an hour. When we come back, there is a possibility we could take uh, action, but there's no guarantee one way or the other. All right, folks, we'll take a 10, 10 minute break and then we'll come back in executive. Can you hear me? All right, he's yep. unmuted. He's good. Okay. We're good. I'd like to come out of executive session. Wait a minute. Hold on. Where's Vince go? Vince. <laughs> There he is. Okay, Vince. <laughs> All right. Well, I need a motion to come out of executive session and a second. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, motion carries. Okay, I need a motion and a second to approve the uh, district goals for the 2021 2022 school year, which is 2021. 2020-2021, which yeah. are the district goals for student achievement in reading, in writing, and also in mathematics. And this is both, you know, it's it's what uh, we have discussed, you know, for quantitative, quantitative, and what was the other word? Qualitative. Oh, qualitative, <laughs> you know, values. So I need a motion and a second to approve this. I'll move. Oh, I'll second. Okay, motion by Marissa, you know, second by Stephen. Uh, questions or comments? Just a comment for the whole board. I appreciate the discussion over the past couple of months. And uh, I believe that these are very worthwhile goals. As I said in executive session, I will be sharing these goals to our distribution list and I will um, we'll post them to the website as well. Uh, and just uh, for any audience members, our reading goal is 60% proficiency by, uh, by our final benchmark, which is in May. Our writing goal is 60% proficiency by uh, May as well. And then our math goal is 70% by May. And uh, as I've said with the board, these are very ambitious goals considering the current circumstances and considering the baseline data that we've collected. So uh, I appreciate the board's discussion of this very important topic. All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? I'm no opposed. Okay. The reason is I just wanted more information on the writing rubrics, which I haven't seen the, the anchor charts, but I do feel overall, overall, I'm very impressed with these goals. All right. Motion carries. Thank, Thank you very you. much, everyone. Um, I need the most important motion of the night, the motion to adjourn. Motion. Oh, anyway. I'll Go ahead, Rose. You can have it. All in favor? Uh, let Rose in. Good night, everyone. Have a wonderful night and a Merry yeah. Christmas. Thank, Thank you, you too. Thank, Thank you, everyone. Have a happy holiday. All right.